Hey everyone, it's Gabe, back again with another painting tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to paint this painting right here. We are only gonna be using three colors for this entire painting. We have a white, black, and cobalt blue. I'm also gonna be using three brushes for this painting. First off, we have the return of Megatron! Megatron, he's flat on the top and he's nice and fat. Next, we have Ignacio. He's a little bit more of a pointed brush, probably about an eighth of an inch thick. And lastly, we have little Tito. Oh, he's so cute. We're gonna start off with Megatron. And we're gonna dip him inside the uh, water cup. Go ahead and dry them off on the paper towel. And the first color we're gonna use is cobalt blue. So go ahead and stake both sides of Megatron inside the cobalt blue. And we're gonna do really, really wide horizontal brush strokes. So I'm just gonna go from one side of the canvas to the other. Let's go ahead and bring this line down about four inches. And we're also gonna bring this blue around to the sides of the canvas as well. And don't forget the top. With Megatron, we're gonna practice a technique called dry brushing. So I only have a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just slowly gonna bring this down. You see how it has like this wispy texture where it's not really like going on that much and you can still kind of see through it. That's what we're going for. And bring that dry brush over to the side of the canvas as well. Now our goal is to make a little bit of a lighter blue. So I'm just gonna take a scoop of this white paint and put it over here next to my blue. And now I'm gonna take some of my blue paint and mix it together. I'm gonna make a lighter blue. So now we'll take our brush and we'll go right underneath the part where we dry brushed it. And we're gonna bring it from one side of the canvas to the other. We're just gonna make really wide brush strokes. And now I'm gonna slowly bring it up into the darker blue. And you'll see that it naturally starts mixing together and creating a nice gradient going from the cobalt blue to this lighter blue. Bring it over to the side. And now we'll just take this color and start bringing it down. We're gonna bring it down to about two thirds of the way down the canvas. And just like before, we're gonna start dry brushing this down a little bit. So with only a little bit of paint on my brush, I'm gonna bring this down and get that dry brush texture again. And that's really gonna help us mix in the next color. So now I'm gonna mix the lightest blue yet. So I'm gonna take even more white, move it over here, and make a really, really nice light blue, like this color here. And just like before, we're gonna go directly on where we dry brushed it and bring it side to side. And now we're gonna slowly start bringing it up into our medium blue so we have this nice gradient. Now everything below that line we can fill in with this color. And there's our background. So we have this gradient going from cobalt blue to a nice medium blue, and then finally a light blue. We'll let that paint dry for a couple minutes and then we'll get started on the moon and the clouds. And for the moon, we're gonna go about five inches in from the right and about six inches down from the top. And we're just gonna paint this circle that's about three inches. So it's three inches tall and about three inches wide. Now it's time to make this moon look like it's glowing. So if you look right here, you can see that it has like this glowing ring around it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Ignacio and wipe some of the paint off of him. So we just have a little bit of white paint. So we'll go around the moon and just create this dry brush effect. So that same dry brush style that we were doing earlier, it's making a comeback. If your moon turned light blue because of your background, don't worry, once it dries, we're gonna go over it one more time, give it a second layer, and then your moon's gonna be bright white. And now you've got your head in the clouds. We're gonna get some clouds going. So I'm only gonna use a little bit of white paint on Ignacio. You don't want a lot of paints on your brush because then you're gonna get a really solid color, and we're looking for something a little bit less opaque, a little more see-through. So down over here, I'm gonna start off by drawing my cloud. So I just have my brush spinning around in a circle and I'm gonna draw the top part of my cloud first. So let's say I want my cloud to be kind of more or less this shape. I did the top first and now from the top of my cloud, I'm just gonna bring it down like this. 
So I'm going down and side to side and just bringing this white down. All right, and then I'm gonna draw a little cloud right below it. And I'm just gonna go across first. I'm not gonna put any more paints on my brush. And then from the top, I'm just gonna start bringing it down. And my brush strokes are in a circle. Okay, so the next cloud I'm gonna do is this one that's coming from the right. So again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush. And I'm gonna draw the top part of the cloud first. So this cloud comes from about a third of the way down. And I'm just gonna make it go across like this. All right, so that's the top part of my cloud. And now for my beginning point, I'm just gonna go around, keep my brush in a circular brush stroke, and I'm just gonna bring it down. Bring your cloud over to the side, and now I'm gonna put a small cloud right in front to kind of make it a little bit more three-dimensional. So about right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw another one, and draw the top part of the cloud first, and then bring it down from the top. We have one more cloud a little bit closer to the top, so I'm just gonna draw the top part of my cloud just like before. And then from the top, I'm just gonna bring it down. One more in front to make it three dimensional. There's a few more closer to the moon here. And now that I have my clouds there, I'm just gonna go around and highlight a few parts of them. If the moon is right here, the highlights would be hitting it towards the left. So amongst the left of some parts of these clouds, I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter so it stands out. And there we have it for the clouds. Let's just go over our moon one more time so we can make it nice and white. And that's it for the sky for now, so we can go ahead and take Ignacio and clean him off. We're going to put him in the bathtub. So you can go ahead and put Ignacio into the black. So we're going to start off about 7 inches from the top right, and we're just going to make a little black mark right here. And now our job is to draw a line from that mark going straight down. Now I'm going to tell you guys something that's very obvious, but it's worth noting. Whenever you're drawing a tree, the thickest part of the tree is always going to be at the base. Same thing with the branch. The branch is always going to be the thickest at the base and it's going to get thinner as it goes out. Now with that in mind, we'll just build up the trunk a little bit. So I can kind of just draw this triangle right here. And there's about four inches of space right here from this line to this line. While this line, it goes a little bit over at a halfway point and it starts building up from there. Let's just go ahead and make this part a little bit thicker in general. And let's go ahead and fill this part in on the bottom. All right, we're gonna start off with this branch right here. So let's make a line a little bit over the halfway point of the canvas. It's gonna come from over here and it's just gonna swing down and connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the base of this branch the thickest. Like so. And I'll also round this part out down here a little bit. So it's not a straight line, I'll go ahead and just give it a little Oh, um, you know, we're just gonna make the silhouette of this tree a little bit more interesting. And we'll move on to this branch right over here where the cats are on the swing. So we'll just make our line. We're gonna start it over here. We're gonna go straight through the moon. And then we're just gonna connect down to about the halfway point right over here. So again, I'm just gonna work on making the base of this branch the thickest towards the bottom. So the lines gradually get thinner as they go out. And now for the main branch, we're just gonna make them a little bit thicker here along the side. Cause he's gotta be thick enough to support these big old branches. And for reference, he's about one inch fat on the top here. Next up is this branch over here. So this one kind of curves up and then back down to kind of give room for these other branches. And we'll start a few inches above him. We'll just go ahead and draw our line. And around here, we'll start curving it down. And I'm gonna start making this branch the thickest towards the bottom. All right, we're gonna have another branch that's gonna come diagonally over here and it's gonna sit a little bit lower than the, the branch that we just made. And the last two are right here sitting at the top. So we'll go ahead and use this space. I'm just gonna create a small little line right here, connect it right there. And the other one, 
So with Tito, we can go ahead and draw some smaller branches. So from this one, we'll go ahead and just draw them out like this. There's another little twig right here. All right, and I'm just gonna extend the points of this one out a little bit. So for these lines, I'm pushing down nice and soft to begin with. And I slowly push down harder and harder so the lines get fatter. And there's another branch that comes over this way, also going on top of the moon. And they've got one more branch kind of hanging down right here. Another one towards the top left, and it's gonna go push past further than those two right here. And then coming from this branch here, we have two more. So this one's gonna kind of shoot out a little bit further, and this one's gonna go right under him. All right, now for this branch right here, that has a long twig that connects about here. And then another one that kind of fills in this space. There's a line that kind of curves around this way. And then one more that hangs out over here. All right, those are all the branches. Next up, we have the leaves that are attached to the branches. So for those, we're just gonna do leaves the same way that we used to do them in third grade. We're just gonna do a little curve this way, and then a little curve coming from the other way. We're gonna fill it in. All right, so here, we'll just keep it going. This branch has about three leaves, and then two on the top. We'll do this one next. It has two leaves on the bottom of this branch here, one on the end, and a few up here. And there's about three on this little branch over here. This branch here has quite a few leaves. We have a cluster of leaves up here. This branch up here has a few. All right, we'll just add some leaves over here on this side. This one here has a few little leaves. That'll do it for the leaves. Next up, we're just gonna create some of these grass blades coming from the bottom. And now with the points of my brush facing up, just like this, I'm gonna use the point of my brush to create some of these grass blades. So here, I'm just gonna fill out the whole bottom of this with tall grass. So I'm just making a bunch of lines facing up. And on this part of the tree, I'm just gonna let the really tall grass blade show. And that's it for the grass. And now next up is the kitties on the swings. So we can go ahead and take Ignacio, put him back inside the black paint. And floating about halfway between this space, so if I have this amount of space here, I'm gonna do it like right here in the center. It lines up with the moon right here. So I'm just gonna draw about a three or four inch line going across. And now I'll get started on this first cat here. So for the first cat, we're just gonna draw a long teardrop shape. So over here towards the left, I'm just gonna draw a little line going this way and make it curve in towards the bottom. And then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Teardrop shape and make it curve in towards the bottom. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in. And we're gonna draw a oval on the top of his head and I'm just going to make his shoulders a little bit bigger. And now with the points of my brush facing up, I can draw the two cat ears. First one's going to come across this way. And the next one, I'm going to point my brush this way and use the tip again for this ear. Perfecto! And now let's go ahead and paint in his tail. So his tail is going to come around this way. So I'm just going to draw a little swoosh coming from here and connecting to the middle of his booty. And now the tail's gonna curve around. And for the second cat, we're still gonna start with a teardrop shape, but this one's gonna be upside down. So the point's gonna be at the center here, and then he's gonna have a rounded top. And he's gonna be shorter than this first cat, so don't make him quite as tall. And I'll make his feet a little bit wider. 
His head is going to be an oval sitting on the top left part of this little teardrop that we made. Go ahead and draw a nice little oval. And we'll draw on his little ears the same way. And now his tail is going to come up from the top right and it's just going to curl in. And there's our two kitties! And now with little Tito we'll draw on these two strings. So a little Tito, I'm just going to try as best as I can to draw a nice thin line going straight up into the branch. Now the original painting has this bird cage right here, but I feel like it kind of detracts attention away from the cats and it kind of throws off the balance. So I'm not going to put the bird cage in this one here. If you'd like to do it, by all means, you're your own grandpa. You can do whatever you want. It's up to you. So I'm going to move right along to do the stars and then the heart on the tree. So we're still going to use Ignacio. And we're going to clean them off completely because the next color we're going to use is pure white. So let's put Ignacio back into the white paint and we'll just do some of these stars. So with these stars, you just want to make it look completely random. So we're just going to go ahead and go over here. I'll just put two right next to each other. And then over here, I'll put another two. Why not? We'll go little groups. You know, they're friends. They're best friends. They like to hang out together. If you want to write your lover's name in the constellations, you can go ahead and do that. You know, you can totally do your own thing with the stars here. So we're going to do one of these shining stars right over here. So for this part, pay attention. If you haven't been paying attention all of class, it's fine. I just ask you to pay attention right now. It's super important that you don't do these lines heavy handed. You want to do them nice and light so you have a nice little shining star. So we're going to do this extra super light handed and I'm just going to draw about a three inch line going up. And I'll do a horizontal line. We're essentially making a plus sign. Now we're going to do a multiplication sign right in the center. And this multiplication sign is much smaller than the plus sign. And there we have it. There's a little shining star. And finally, we're just going to wrap up with this little carving of a heart on the tree. So right here in the center, I'm just going to go ahead and block out a heart, just like how we used to do it in third grade. And inside the heart, just put whatever it is that you hold most dearest to your heart. Inside my heart, I put rum because I'm Puerto Rican and deep down, I know truly in my heart, I love rum. And there we have it. Those are all the steps that you need to know in order to paint this painting right here. Every week I do a giveaway for the painting that I painted last week and all you need to do to enter the giveaway is be a subscriber and leave a comment in the video. And this week's winner is... Congratulations, all you need to do is just message me on the back end of my channel, your contact info, and I will mail you your painting. Also, if you guys want to subscribe, I'm going to be putting out more and more painting classes. I'm motivated. You guys are motivating me. This is awesome. Let's do it. If you guys like what I'm doing here, please consider going to my Patreon page and pledging anything. Anything that you guys do is always greatly appreciated. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Gabe. You've been awesome. And until next time, stay creative. videos flowing around my head click them click them they're wonderful stuff we have painting classes and time lapses ah oh, it's so nice it's so nice have fun